Uh, this is a 100% custom built. 100%. Uh, this slide out never used to exist. But right now it's all, almost all the way on in the in position. We will be bumping it out. Uh, this is a really cool project. It will have a bit of a modern flair to it. Uh, a lot of unique features. So the slide out will house a double recliner sofa. And uh, on the opposite side of it, on this in this section here, there will be an entertainment center with a fireplace, a TV that will lift up electronically, uh, hoping to get a little bit of storage. There will be upper cupboards, uh, housing uh, or for storage as well. Over the main entry door, which is something that uh, previously this coach uh, was a VIP truck and this doorway used to be all the way almost to the bottom and it had a weird L-shaped entryway uh, that didn't work for anybody it was just very uncomfortable we ended up putting the Lippert stairs stairs in uh, four, four step staircase that lifts up and is stowed in this portion of the step well uh, most of the electronics will be housed in here there is a, an insane amount of electronics uh, that's just what has been requested so we make it happen um, this is the entryway going into the middle of the coach. Uh, this coach is not very wide. It's not your standard eight foot wide. I can't remember how wide it is. I think it's like seven, seven and a half feet. So it's, it's kind of narrow. So we have to be very creative with our, our layout. The bathroom wall is curved as well as the kitchen is curved. So it gives you a nice little curved uh, hallway in be between and what that does is it softens the whole look so we could have went all square and so forth but having a curve it just makes uh, makes it nice and gentle and then also with the curve you know the sofa's got some curve to it uh, we're picking up on styling cues of this uh, range hood which has this curved glass okay the kitchen countertops here are going to be curved as well. It would be an exact perfect curve of this uh, bathroom wall. The bathroom wall has it will have two almost like French doors that will slide this way. Okay, so it's like like it's not a bar a bifold. It's it's more like a barn <laughs> barn doors uh, that will open up. The shower is a residential shower. Uh, we went with just because it's it's we didn't want a neo angle we wanted this quarter round it'll have the doors that will open up here so it'll be a nice entryway uh, it's got quite a crazy shower head it lights up um, with LED lights there's body sprays there is also going to be a rain shower coming down here as well we have a big skylight it's got the cup uh, plastic film covering it so it's not allowing all the light in here. Uh, this is a special toilet. Uh, it's, a, it's not a composting toilet. It's a Cinderella toilet that uh, actually burns, uses propane and burns all the, the poopy stuff. So uh, that's quite a unique toilet um, and it's, it's pretty, pretty fancy. Uh, we don't have a lot of room in here, so we're, we've opted for this gorgeous little sink that will be just mounted here with a fancy mirror above it and a little bit of a storage uh, cabinet. So we are really pressed for space. We, we're trying to maximize the space and it, it, it's a challenge. Uh, this, this flooring will be a commercial grade vinyl floor throughout the entire coach and, right, and then we've got teak. Uh, going into the shower floor as well as the shower pan. These teak uh, panels, there's three of them here. Uh, they are removable uh, to, uh, to clean up any messes that occur as well as uh, any moisture that does seep down uh, or leak out of the shower and so forth as you're getting in and out. It'll drain onto the floor and the floor is 100% waterproof and it's a one-piece floor so you don't have to worry about seams and so forth or water damage if if it does get wet 
So my apologies, uh, you'll see that everything's coated in dust. Um, that's what happens in any shop, you do get dust. So we are going to give this a really good cleaning, thorough cleaning, uh, so that we can get going back up on it. So the kitchen area here, uh, so the bathroom starts off skinny and goes wide. Opposite, the kitchen starts off wide and goes to skinny. Uh, this has a unique uh, drawer style fridge and freezer uh, it's very nice the customer has picked those out and then we have a convection microwave oven which will be mounted up here a wonderful little light or a window we always try and put windows over the sink uh, the sink is nice single basin quite deep uh, that's that's about eight and a half inches deep very nice two burner cooktop and they'll have the glass uh, partition or, or glass cover, pardon me. Uh, the back is unique. It, it's a swirl, plastic, um, kind of backsplash. That's all plastic it, it, and it's white, it's gorgeous. All the walls, all the ceiling will be a painted aluminum, a white painted aluminum. And then the cabinetry in here will be this bronzy gold uh, laminate. And it's all high gloss. It's Right now it's got the protective cover on there. And then the fabrics are really nice as well. So we use a lot of vinyls. And above the dinette here, the dinette has uh, the telescoping table mount. Uh, nice big seating. So you could easily sit six people in here. I don't think six people will fit, but boy, you can, <laughs> you can get them in here if you want. Um, Above me is a what's known as a Euroloft bed. You'll see these on some of the high-end coaches. It's swaying right now because there's no tracks. There's two tracks that will go up and down that wall with guide wheels that will stabilize this. So this mattress will, or bed will actually lift right up to the ceiling and then down, uh, I think it goes down to almost about this height here. Uh, we'll make a ladder for gaining access to it. So technically with the bed down, uh, there'll be a bunk, or this will make out into a bed as well as you've got the queen bed above. Above the bed, you'll see a really nice skylight. Uh, this skylight opening opens up to almost 90, virtually 90 degrees. Uh, the customer will be able to step on the bed and up on into the skylight and up onto the roof deck. And we'll show the roof deck uh, at a, in another video. Um, yeah, so there's uh, still a, f a fair amount of work to do. Uh, we're just getting the cobwebs out. I look, as I go through the coach, I basically formulate my plan, um, my game plan as I call it, and I always have to be 15 to 20 steps ahead of where I am at the present moment. And so uh, I, over, I look at everything. You have to think about all the plumbing's coming in here, all the electrical, the cabinetry all the components there's just over or there's between two and three thousand parts that are actually going into this coach literally between two and three thousand parts um, so it's my job my responsibility to bring all those together they all have to fit they all have to marry uh, with one another they all have to make sense they have to uh, meet code which is a big thing and uh, everything has to work at the end of the day. So this is what custom's all about. Um, it's not for the faint of heart, and uh, this is what we do. So uh, it's a good challenge. Uh, I'm up for it, and I'm excited to get going on it. All right, we'll start cleaning and get on it. <laughs> all right, have a good one. All right, back to the big build, and uh, here we go. So. To give you an update of where we are, uh, we ended up pulling out everything. We had to do that anyway. Uh, to, we're, going, we're doing the final prep for the flooring to go in, and the flooring will go in either late today or tomorrow morning. Um, so the reason these walls are not insulated yet, the wires are not run. The reason we do put up all the wood uh, wall structure is so that we can map out exactly where all the components are going and where we need electrical so you can see i've roughed in the holes for the uh, ac outlets and then all the holes for the ceiling 
you know, are, are laid out. And uh, this helps, helps us down the road. If I were just to skin and insulate this and try and run wires uh, afterwards, it'd be a living nightmare. So this is, so we're actually kind of building this twice. All this will come out again. Um, but that's just the process. That's the, the easiest way it's actually done. So it seems like more work at, at, in the first stage, but it's actually less work um, than if we were to have to try and rework everything afterwards. So the floor, the floor started off as a three quarter inch plywood uh, as a subfloor. And then what we've done on top of that is added half inch, half inch. Uh, so now we're at an inch and a quarter thick flooring. And what we did was we, the customer's request was to have uh, electric heating pads within the floor. So everywhere you see the gray and this yellow uh, filler is where the heat pads are. So what we did was by building up the half inch on either side of the, uh, of the heat pads, uh, we were able to basically create a ditch in which we did uh, the self-leveling concrete as a filler. And then what, so we poured the self-leveling concrete, we put the mat down in the bed of that, and then we top coat it with the self-leveling uh, cement. It's impossible to get the coach 100% perfectly flat to do the self-leveling. So it did spill out over uh, a little bit on the edges and so forth, but it's it's pretty damn good. But we're going to be leveling it with a um, 36 grit sandpaper and on the uh, on the sander and leveling it out, and then doing any final top coat with uh, a filler just to make it 100% perfect before we go and lay the vinyl. Another point is when you are, if you are doing this on your custom build. Uh, with the heat pads, it is very important to, first of all, test your pads, your heat pads. Uh, you do an ohms check on the wires, make sure that uh, they are working, first of all. Then when you go and install it, uh, while you're installing it, you also want to do another recheck of that to make sure that no wires are broken. After all, you are embedding, <laughs> you are burying it in the concrete. And once it's in there, like that's it's in there. And then uh, after you do the flooring, um, then you want to recheck it a third time just to make sure everything is good. So we've taken those three steps and uh, we're just happy to be continuing on with this. So what we've done earlier is we've done the step well. It's all wrapped and cased in um, and then we'll be continuing the flooring and then wrapping around the, the slide out as well. So this is where we're at and we're just going to continue on and make it happen. All right, onward and upward. Thank <laughs> you. 
so as you can see, we've done a, our final cleanup and the floor. The floor has a, a couple different fillers on it, which is why it's different color. Um, we were experimenting a little bit and uh, just finding uh, new products. And so that's, you know, that's, that's one thing uh, it, it, that you have to do. Uh, you always strive to do better um, and try, try new products. So we're happy with this. Uh, the floor was a little roly poly just because we used the self-leveling concrete. It was pretty good, but it wasn't perfect. So we like to make uh, our floors as good as they can be due to the fact that when you glue the flooring down, it's down. Uh, there is no going back. So uh, we want to make sure that there's no voids, no holes and so forth. Uh, and that way, um, you know, because uh, gap or holes and different levels of your subfloor can actually translate through the vinyl. Uh, so it's very, very important to us to make the floor as best as it can be. Um, we could even went with skinning over this whole flooring with quarter inch plywood. Uh, there wouldn't have been anything really wrong with that. The only thing is, is now the heat from the heat pads has to come up through that plywood as well. Uh, I would rather have it just be directly under the floor. You do have to check with your flooring manufacturer to see what temperatures it is rated for. Uh, so the, our particular vinyl that we're putting in, uh, the manufacturer does not want the temperature of the heat pads to be any more than 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, 85 is pretty hot anyway, so uh, it, it's uh, we that's something you have to check on, and uh, we did, and we're good to go. So uh, the next thing is is um, just double checking everything uh, or triple checking everything, make sure it's super clean, and then we'll be cutting the floor and then gluing it in. All right, so you're up to date, and here we go. All right, <clears throat> what we've done here is we've uh, just triple checked our, our subfloor. We want it to be as perfect as it can be. Uh, and we cut the flooring to size, a little oversized. And what we're doing right now is uh, just letting it acclimate. And what that means is you basically bring the floor, the temperature of the flooring itself to the temperature of the coach. Uh, just so they're evenly matched. So when you're gluing it, uh, you have no problems. As you can see with the slide out, what we've done here is we've no, this is called hyperextending the slide. So the, the slide out is typically over here. So what we've done is on this one, because it's a rack and pinion, we've braced up the back underneath, and then we've, we've actually brought the, the slide out rams further than what they would normally go. And that way, and that way you can get right to the edge. So we hit, here's the rollers that the slide out rolls on. Okay, and we'll cut the flooring around it. And uh, we'll secure it here with staples, as well as the glue. And the staples just give a little extra protection, um, a little more snort to the, uh, to the flooring, just because there's going to be a lot of pressure here rubbing on the, on the, on the flooring itself. We do have clearances. Uh, but still, um, once we put the sofa in and it's heavy, as well as this slide out is built very solid, it's very heavy. Um, so there is a chance that when the slide out does come in, it can tip forward, which is why we, we want to make sure that this is fully glued down. So that's the way we do it. We have not had any issues in the past, so life must be good out there. And, uh, and we're doing things right, and this is, this is what we do. So uh, no shortcuts, uh, we, we take the time to do it right. That's always been our motto. So anyway, uh, we're just gonna let this acclimate um, for the rest of the day, and then we'll be glowing in uh, shortly. So, all right, onward and upward. Fucking dream, look at this, it's fucking. What the fuck? It's, it's like it's, it's so wet, liquidy in here, and I go and spread it on, and it's like fucking dry. And then I try and water it down, and it's just. What a 
fucking disaster. Fucking disaster. I can't scrape this off. I can, I don't know, fuck. I've just, why am I having so much fucking difficulty with this kind of stuff?